gaze through the contours of world sculpture tradition is incomplete without lingering long on the Indian gallery. It's no exaggeration to say that temples of India were magnificent museums for the connoisseur of sculpture. Sadly, the best of Kerala sculpture tradition is confined to Hindu temples where not everybody gets easy access. The turn of 20th century brought a sunny change. It was Kanai Kunniraman who freed the art of sculpture from the claustrophobia of semi-lit temple recesses with his jumbo icons out in the broad daylight. Professor Kanai is indeed the father of modern Kerala sculpture tradition. Raman was born in Kuttamat in Kasaragod in 1937. He went to Slade School in London after honing his skills from KCS Panikkar and Professor S Thanapal in Chennai. At London, the vistas of world art were opened to him through the scholarly eyes of Professor Reg Butler. However, Kanai preferred to spawn his artistic life on his native land. Like his sculptures, his life took the less trodden road of a maverick. Its artistic passion is as ancient as his childhood wonderstruck by the fiery dawns of Thayum. What did he see in the multi-hued masks and headgears of Thayum? Did he see only the contours of gods and goddesses swinging and spinning to brisk body kinetics? Kanai saw the enormous silhouettes merging out of the Thayum dynamics and panning out to the mindscapes. He eagerly absorbed the folk velocity of Thayum with a slow realization that wide open spaces were fundamental to popularizing sculptures. There was no sculpture without mother. There was no folk sculpture without the warm lap of nature. After mother icon in nature, sex was the next eye opener. As the sparks of primordial passion surged through his chisel, Kanai started translating the superhuman vision that brought the artist out of his chrysalis. His sculpting fingers molded not just the mud cakes of childhood fancy, but the luscious swell of feminine breasts too. Suckled in this folk tradition, it was only natural that he chose the worn hilly tracks of Malambara as a backdrop for his coming of age work. His popular sculpture work in Malambara with its imposing breasts was born out of this elementary folk consciousness. Of course, there was the unavoidable hella blue over the vulgarity of Yakshi. Time has quenched the rage of traditionalists. After several monsoons, Yakshi stood her ground, head and shoulders high in ascetic radiance. In the redefined morality mindscape, Yakshi in Malambura is now marked as a proud icon for Kerala in international chronicle of sculptures. If Yakshi embodies the seductive semantics of mountains and valleys, the coastline occurred to Kanai in a different angle. At the beach, it was not the strident oceanic wave, but the pristine, pearl-hearted shell of the deep seas that ravished him. He saw the dream drowsy mermaid within the seashell, and promptly he wanted her to be on the sands of Shangamugam. That's how Sagarika Nyaga was born on the beach. Yakshi talks of the strength of female body. Sagarika Nyaga is about its grace. That's why. Yakshi is postured vertically and Sagarika Nyaga horizontally. As one of the biggest sculptures in India, the micro-level attention to detail in Sagarika Nyaga is simply Kanayan. You see the serpentine coiling and uncoiling of sea waves in the long locks of Sagarika Nyaga. You see the seductive architecture of softness in her languorous pose. Go to 
the Shankamugam sands with its swirl of crowds and non-stop traffic, with its rows of heritage structures and endless religious rituals like the Arata ceremony, and with majestic jet planes flying in and flying out. Regardless of the hurly burly around, the Empress Sai Sagara Kanyaga rests her head lazily on the sun kissed horizon. At Fat Township Udyogamandal, as in outdoors, you will find another abstract work. This piece, done in rosewood, is Kanai's one and only work in wood. The six-footer, brought out of a single piece of log, is a folk abstract on meditation. Mukula Perumal is India's first installation sculpture. It is debate between the time trinity, the past, the present and the future. The past is past and so it is fixed. The three-eyed present reminds you that it is a confluence of yesterday, today and tomorrow. And right before the trio lies a shattered coconut in two pieces. The statue of future has a bird sitting on its high perch. Like a bird engraved on a pillar of an ancient temple, this one has its wings spread eagled as if ready to take off. With an illusion of scattered sculpturing plane, Kanai creates a feel of dynamism of time. The whiteness of the lines on this coal black work adds to its vibrant dynamism. The public sphere art of Kanai has a diversity marked by the multiple layers of meaning in the fountain sculptures. Take a look at the Trinity in the Doorkeeper Sculpture Complex in Kollam. It has two females and one male. This contrast or confluence of emotions, maybe emotionlessness, evidences a very plurality of the host culture. It is the emergence of contemporary gender sensitiveness that characterizes a female sculpture in Perundal Manna. The woman who strides down the flight of steps, head held high, fist clenched and brushing aside all stumbling blocks is a singular embodiment of a fiesty female. The fascination with colossal figures can be seen at the Veli village too. The whole village was a piece of sculpture for Kanai when tourism department assigned him to design a village of figurines. The oneness in his elaborate variety is evident here. The intertwining with mother nature is nowhere so picture perfect. Here is a work that grandly reclines on the bare sand. There is a work that raises itself to the skies. Check out the sculpture called Atom or the Dance. It depicts two female forms. They absorb the entire range of Kerala's ritual dance tradition from Kadakali to Mohiniyattam, from Mohiniyattam to Theyam. This installation sculpture is a joyous marriage of modernity and tradition. This is done in Kanai's most favorite styles. The Amma sculpture in Kannur also leans towards this dear traditional style. The Thai sculpture in Veli follows the Amma style. So does the Amma work at Delhi. The latest work in this genre is a Savitri sculpture in Tonakil Ashan Smaragam. Once in a while, Kanai feels that Mother Nature is stingy in playing her craft to the full flourish. In petulant mutiny, he tries to compensate with his whale of a sculpture. That's how he adorned Whaley with the biggest conch in the world. The most amazing architectural secret about it is that this over 50 feet conch does not have the support of a pillar or a beam. It is just Kanai's folk sense of dimensions that holds it together. The Nandi or the bull figure in Veli must be a takeoff from the almost half-abandoned work at Malambura. But then, 
The text and texture are entirely different. This half abstract figure clambers out of a wall engraved with Sindhava alphabet. Actually, this is not particular to this figure alone. It is a text, the luminous archway to almost all of Kanai's abstracts. His abstracts reinterpret Sindhava heritage in million ways. They also exemplify the concept that a public sculpture is also a space to play hide and seek. Sometimes, it is difficult to categorize whether a work is abstract or concrete. The sculpture Sunset in Veli falls in this category. It leads us to the vistas beyond sunset. A mother entranced by the sight of a setting sun, a colored hole that represents the sun, a sphere that inspires little limbs to move about while remaining rooted as a standstill sphere. What a preposterous set of mischievous impulses to the sunset sculpture give you. This environmental sculpture is among the more symbolic ones in the Vaili village. The portrayal of a lotus bud craning its long stem in eagerness to blossom and the wild flower takes us to the primordial desires that sustain the rhythm of life. This nature and man work is done, yielding as a patch of shade beneath a leaning beam. For the visitor, the shade is a resting spot, perhaps a play spot. The sculpture has a leaning backdrop. It is read as a dynamism of Teyam. The relief in this sculpture is that of Goddess Nature. The sculpture Arlinganam or the Embrace is an example of the simplest of abstracts. It is minimal art. The short sculpture complex Fertility is resplendent with fertility images like life creation, giving and receiving. Eyes on infinite horizon, the figure infinity mourns over the sorrows of the sons of sea. It was almost prophetic in its feel since tsunami washed in the sorrows within two years after installing the sculpture. Marandara is a spectacle of minimal art. There is a portal for the modern deity. There is one for the Yakshi deity. There are even the two broken halves of coconut in prayerful offering to these deities. It is as though the little stone lamp that the natives use for their lighting ritual has turned into a giant temple. The evening sun lights up the oil wick of a folk tradition. A modern day icon thereby gives continuity to the primordial dawn of nature worship, illuminating the fact that modernity is, after all, a rebirth of tradition. Manama, who wraps herself in grass-green robes, is a sublime work of a creator who saw artistic potential in every trough and crest of nature. This hillock of femininity is beyond the mundane plane of landscaping or land art. No doubt this is as old as a childhood that reveled in baking mud cakes in the sun. No garden in India has as many sculptures as in Veli. Geography rich by vistas of sea shore, lake, train and aeroplane gets a statuesque touch through the lavish garden art. Even the trees that Kanai planted here have a sculptural quality about them. There is a sheer folk presence about this museum without walls that continuously beckons ordinary people inside. Kanai does not view his works as mere public sculptures. He likes to see them as environmental sculptures. Even the seeds attached to them are part of the sculpture. Each seed is like an installation picture. Figure 
Dramas and repos are the simplest among the semi-abstracts. You meet such figures in Payambalam and Shankhamukham. They are known in the names like Relax and Evening Vision. He also marked the beginning of a convention that replays its stereotype award trophies with award sculptures. Kanai saw this as part of the mission to make sculpture popular. A visitor to Kanai's work stables would be struck by the realization that at every stage of sculpturing, he was simultaneously the visualizer and the workman. His genius and hard work starts from the moment the clay figures take shape. These are three dimensional light little. I did a photo with about two dimensional light. Half photo to come on the rio. He three three dimensional light, two dimensional light. He are two dimensional carnum for artists, not three dimensional light and a great man's love. Adam. A padin there, three dimensional light, I would result in Dagan and art in clay model in Dagan. Our model be. Parvis and the Mokang and Yana, Karnang and Yana, Chundang and Yana, a death in Dukang and a hairstyle, they love Pinira. At the Pinisha in the Samitana, they have been severe to personality. But I think I mentioned Hara and Ventai. Some of the death in the country, they love artists and some of them are already considering the Kirkaria. Upper Anna, he Vargis, Vargis, I am happy. Little Sada and I mentioned the Pinisha. Vargis and the inner personality. Alan and the Ethan Vidu. At the next stage, when the clay figures take wax form, you see the penis and devotion that he brings into the detailing. In the initial stages, you see only Kanai. His workmen enter the fray only in the various stages when the cast is made. At almost any stage, there is one person who hurries in and out as a main assistant. That is his dear better half, Nalini. Both the sculptures that he fused together to wholesomeness and the engraved figures he make in two dimensions, all of them have a halo of kanainas about them 
that is instantly recognizable. The first portrait statue that Kanai designed was that of Subhash Chandra Bose. His perspective on portrait statues was that they should have a public appeal rather than bring money for the sculptor. He has done portrait statues of Chittara Tirunal, Hanuman Taya, Pattam Tanu Pillai, and Mannattu Padmanabhan. Beyond external similarity with the subject, he also endeavors for perfection in body language. He attends to the way the subject wears his munda, the way he wraps his shawl, trying to map the ins and outs of the personality, looking closely into even the texture of the munda. When you look at the EMS statue, you're struck by details like the way he wears his munda, his gait, the revolutionary tilt of his wrist, his reading habits, and even the hint of the stammer in his facial expression. Kanai has done various busts in various media, adding to the variety of his artistic universe. He has earmarked his space in the field of painting too. He has been much lauded for his painting works too. In terms of style, his paintings lean towards folk tradition and ritual dance forms like Tayyam. His colors also reach out to explore the tantric styles of primitive art. The architectural models of this style can be seen in Mullakil Temple in Alapura. The point of several sculptures is as much a sculptor of several poems. Kanai has brought out his own collection of poems. Many of the poems have been translated to Hindi. मात्र पितृ पूजा पौरोहित्य तिन विग्रह पूजा देव नाम तिन मानस पूजा मनोरोग शांति पूजा क्षेत्र बंधितन देवन तडवर नामम देवालयम श्री को विलिलिरिकम देवमिन्न उरुकार्चवस्तु प्रपंच Kanai Kunyaraman's cultural tradition is not locked up in mere four decades of history. He is one artist who gives continuity to neo-contemporary history. There are many ongoing works of importance too. The sculptures coming up at Tonakil Ashan Smaragam is bound to be watchworthy.
culture coming up at Kasargod in memory of endo sulfan victims is bound to be a piece of history while we the world is slipping retrograde to caveman culture by racing downhills and soiling clear rivulets kanai's mountainous sculptures continue to fill the land of kerala with village sanctity the scalpel of genius never goes silent it goes on and on satyatinu saundaryamilla satyatinu vairupyamilla bhavana maya vilasam panjendriya bhogarahasyam suryan pagalai varum pol nilal pooja arkuvendi suryan pagalai varum pol nilal pooja 